All right. Here we are. Take it away. Hello. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're here talking about the Bachelor of Communication and Media Studies, or BCOMS. Um, I'm Dr. Miranda Brady, and I'm an associate professor as well as the undergraduate supervisor in communication and media studies. Uh, so I both teach and I do research in communication and media studies, and I absolutely love what I do. Um, I'm joined today uh, by two students in our program as well, and I'm, I feel very lucky that they have um, decided to spend their Saturday with us today, so thank you very much. Um, so Gracie Lee Phillip and Rup Bajwa are both honor students in BCOMS, and Gracie is the Vice President of the Communication Student Society, or the CSS, and Rup uh, is a BCOM student who is also um, a, in the co-op program or the cooperative education program. Uh, so we'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. Um, so uh, would you two like to say hi um, really quick now and uh, we'll get uh, to, to your actual um, presentations a little bit later? Hi, everyone. Nice to Hello, see everyone in the session. Nice to have you all here today. Thanks. Um, so just a reminder, uh, I think our conversation is being recorded today. So just a heads up on that. Um, and we will get to questions in the chat a little bit later on if we if we have them. And, and we'll also have a Q&A period um, toward the end as well. Um, so if we somehow miss your question, please feel free to follow up with us um, by email or by visiting our website. Um, or you can also chat with us in the chat booth today. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Emily Hiltz, is in there chatting with visitors um, right now. Dr. Hiltz teaches some of the core second and third year courses that all the students are required to take. So she can really talk um, a lot about what it's like in those um, first year um, courses as well. Um, so today I'll talk a bit about the culture and careers of BCOMs, um, and I'll get into the degree structure. But before I get into the details of the program, I want to screen for you our program trailer uh, to give you a bit of an orientation and feel for what the program is all about. Um, so if Millie, if you could please um, take it away with the video, that would be great. And I'll stop sharing my uh, presentation now. Media shape your world. It's time to discover how you can shape the media with Carleton University's Communication and Media Studies program. Learn what drives today's media issues and trends. Make sense of our complex modern world. Understand the whole picture. Located in Canada's capital, Carleton is for community. Connect with organizations policymakers, and communicators that are affecting change. Have a front row seat to national politics and a window into Canada's place on the international stage. If you want to challenge convention, affect change, and be career ready, then it's time to choose communication and media studies. It's time to choose Carleton. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, so now I'll talk a little bit more about the um, specifics of, um, of our program. Uh, so BCOMS, or the Bachelor of Communication and Media Studies, prepares students to enter a workforce that expects them to be both analytical and adaptable in a rapidly changing media scape. From fake news to TikTok influencers, our degree trains students to ask critical questions about the messages that swirl around them every single day and to think about how they can shape a better and more equitable future. Fundamental to the way we live and vital to nearly every human relationship, industry sector and professional field, communication and media are among the most relevant, exciting and powerful subjects you can study. In the Bachelor of Communication and Media Studies, we focus on lots of different intersections of media and communication. For example, we now have several alumni working in public health communications, and this is just one of many different examples of career paths taken by our alumni. Almost every kind of organization in every sector needs effective communicators, so there are many different career path options. 
And not all BCOM students go into professional communication at all, but take the research and critical thinking skills they've developed in our program and apply them in different areas from education to politics. We have one of the most well-established programs in Canada with an excellent reputation that spans more than 40 years. Though our program is one of the most established in Canada, we've also managed to keep pace with contemporary changes all along the way. We continually infuse our program with new courses from big data and algorithmic culture to digital storytelling, media, gender, and sexuality, communication and health, communication and science, racism and digital media, and climate change and communication. We provide our students with a foundation in our field while also providing theoretical tools and the language in our field that'll ground future media analysis, making students adaptable on the job market. So our students really get the tools they need to think with and to be adaptable in the workplace. So BCOMS is a four year 20 credit honors degree that allows you to tailor your coursework to your intellectual and professional interests, while at the same time building a solid academic foundation. In addition to learning research skills, you'll learn about media events through many different perspectives from historical to political. By the time you reach your fourth year, you'll be developing your dossier with a portfolio to showcase, as well as a narrative about yourself and your career path. So our program works to balance scholarly and professional development. So as stated by Kevin Parent, who's an alumnus of our program, learning how comms theories actually play out in real world settings is what has definitely helped me the most in my career. Um, and Kevin is now the social media lead at Ottawa Public Health. So just one example of a career path taken by one of our alumnus, or one of our alumni. I also wanna talk about the location and physical features of our program. Our program is located in Richcraft Hall, just steps from the scenic Rideau River. And so here's a, a picture of our lovely building. Um, our proximity to Parliament Hill, not-for-profit organizations and industry means our students benefit from many different opportunities. When major issues occur on the Hill, at the Supreme Court or in the halls of Parliament, our program is distinct from many others like it in other cities because students are able to be there in person to observe. Um, to meet with political advocates, journalists, and others. And this also means we have access to experts who visit our classes as guest speakers. We've also had sessional instructors who are experts from the government and industry. For example, the CRTC or the Canadian Radio and Telecommunications Commission um, and Statistics Canada, and not-for-profit organizations as well. Um, so these connections also really are one of the benefits that we have in being in Ottawa. Our program takes full advantage of our beautiful facilities, hosting many special events. In addition, faculty and staff offices um, where students meet with their professors and advisors are also in Richcraft Hall. Um, and we also have a student resource center which provides space for quiet studies, um, collaborative group work and meeting rooms. Um, so it's not uncommon to see faculty and staff mingling and meeting with students and there's a real community feel to our program. There are lots of opportunities for students to collaborate with their instructors, for example, through paid research projects. Um, and for some fourth year students, they participate in the honors research essay, which is also, um, was, which is also an option. Um, this is where students work with a supervisor for credit to write a research essay on a topic of their choice. So our faculty are internationally recognized. Um, many are, uh, participate in funded research and have grants, some have labs. Um, and there are many examples of faculty mentorship where undergrad students gain hands-on research experience um, through some of the paid opportunities provided by our faculty. They assume key roles in our field that translate into experiential knowledge in the classroom and beyond. For example, Dr. Dwayne Winsick is the principal investigator on a $2.5 million grant which studies global media concentration or media ownership and control issues. For example, we think about some of the ethical implications around big media companies like Facebook um, or telecoms issues related to Bell and Rogers in Canada. These are just some of the kinds of things that Dr. Winsick uh, covers in his research. Dr. Merlena Lim holds the Canada Research Chair in Digital Media and Global Network Society, looking at international communications and media issues. 
Dr. Benjamin Wu is the director of the grant-funded Comic-Cons Research Project and the president of the Canadian Society for the Study of Comics. Dr. Armand Towns, who just joined our, our faculty from the University of Richmond in the US, also brings an exciting perspective on teaching and research related to racism and digital media, uh, for which he is internationally known. Um, and finally, Dr. Josh Greenberg, uh, recently won a Commentary Excellence Award for his contribution to communication around public health risks. All of these successes have meant opportunities for BCom students from the classroom to paid research assistantships. So as mentioned, our alumni take uh, many different career paths, including jobs in government, communications offices, not-for-profit organizations, and the private sector. And they work in various industries from public health to high tech and education. Our students have found rewarding work as advisors to federal cabinet ministers and as communication strategists with leading charities, NGOs, and corporations. They also work as entrepreneurs, researchers, and media and cultural policy analysts. Importantly, our vantage close to the Capitol also means many of our instructors and students have professional connections there, which can lead to job placements in both the private and public sectors. So Aaron Bender Kerbel, who graduated from our program in 2020, got a job as a strategic communications advisor with Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada. Erin states that her transition into government communication was a seamless and gratifying experience, and she notes the career development opportunity she had in BCOMS. Our upcoming fall speaker series also highlights alumni and the different career paths they've taken. Um, including a senior speechwriter for the Department of National Defense, the CEO and founder of Quake Lab, an inclusion and communications agency, and a public, a public and patient engagement coordinator for the Canadian Medical Association and a disability rights advocate. So these uh, speakers definitely demonstrate the diverse career paths our students have taken. So another way that students were able to gain professional experience is through the co-op or the cooperative education experience. We have many stories of successful placements with co-op and our students have had some really, really exciting opportunities and worked with some amazing employers. Um, so co-op combines traditional coursework with hands-on experience working in the field. And these work terms are paid full-time employment in the field directly related to your work in communication and media studies. Um, our students have worked in a wide variety of roles in Health Canada, Natural Resources Canada, National Defense, Statistics Canada, the House of Commons, the Canadian Medical Association, and the National Research Council of Canada. So placements in private companies have also included Honeywell and Nokia, um, and our students have worked in important roles as communications officers, digital marketers, strategic communicators, researchers, and engagement officers. So I'll provide one more um, example uh, before I ask Roop to um, talk a little bit about their experience. So Crystal May Puguan, um, who worked three terms at Health Canada as a program officer and a digital communications advisor in the communication and public affairs branch, um, managed to land a full-time uh, position right after graduation. So um, this was great for Crystal. Um, and her position taught her a great deal about strategic communication, forms of media analysis, and strategies for resolving a variety of problems and, be and being adaptable. Um, so this is just one example. Um, and as mentioned before, you can, um, you can check out more details related to um, co-op um, through our co-op website. And um, now I'll just ask Rup Bajwa to talk a little bit about their experience. I'll, I'll just pro provide a brief introduction though, um, first before they do. Um, originally from the greater Toronto area, Rup is a fourth year communication and media studies student who is also working toward a minor in film studies. Um, and as a student in the co-op program, she's currently on a work term with the strategic initiatives team within the office of the vice president's students and enrollment division on the Carleton campus. So thanks. For well, thank you, Professor Brady, for having me and hello to everyone here. Um, before I dive into my experience in the program and in co-op, I just want to bring it back. So I wasn't always in um, communications and media. So 
when I entered Carleton, I was actually an architecture student. And I was, after a week, I decided that was not for me. And then I quickly shifted into engineering and did that for a semester. And again, decided that was not for me. So you can imagine the look on my parents' faces when I told them that. Um, but then I pretty much spent the second semester of my first year exploring my strengths, my dislikes, what I'm interested in. And I realized that I'm really strong at writing. I'm passionate about film and digital media. And when I met with academic advising, they they sent me straight to journalism and communication. And so I was really happy about that. And that summer I switched into the program and I made sure that I applied with the cooperative education option because I knew that I wanted to get some work experience before graduating. And so I'll dive into that a little bit later, but so, there I was second year roof in my first year communications course, comms 1001, um, hoping that I made the right decision. And I definitely did because that course kind of, it will introduce you to all the opportunities and possibilities of communication, whether it's media analysis, media industry, pop culture, film, radio, there's so much that you get to explore upon in that course. And as well, you also, there's a discussion group with that course. You get to meet a lot of your fellow students and make some friends, get to know other people while they're in the program. And for first and second year, you do get a lot of electives where you get to explore your interests. So I'm sure I assure you that you will get to learn your strengths and just like how I got, got to do that. And so after my second year at Carleton, first year in the program, I began applying for my first co-op term. But unfortunately it was summer 2020 and the pandemic happened. So I wasn't able to secure a position that summer. Um, but thankfully the cooperative co education office is super supportive and they understood the special circumstance. So I was able to change my work study mm -hmm. pattern. And for those that are unfamiliar, the work study pattern essentially refers to the sequencing of when you're on a work term. So working full time, and then when you're on a study term, so you're in school full time. And so I so was able to change it to work out best for me. And I realized, you know what, if I'm not doing co-op, I'll do a summer course. And thankfully, there was a great selection even during the pandemic for summer courses. So I was able to take a second year course and set myself up for a great third year. Um, speaking of third year, definitely one of it was the favorite of all the years that I've had at Carleton. It was where I got to take all my favorite classes that I've had so far, explore some niche courses and content. Um, one that I'll shout out was definitely Critical Studies in Advertising and Consumer Society. Um, that course touched upon a lot. You get to analyze the mechanisms of marketing, advertising, consumer culture, look at it through a political lens, an economic lens, and study the cultural implications of consumer culture. So definitely one of my favorite courses that I would recommend if you do end up coming to the program. Um, and then, so yeah, that was the end of my third year that ended in April of 2021 this year. And then it was time for my first co-op position. Yay, I suggest I um, successfully got a first co-op and it was with the Department of National Defense. Um, so a government federal position and I worked as a communication specialist and so um, I got to work on a lot of great opportunities. I got to work on a communications plan for a major project there. Um, I got to work on some guides for student onboarding. I learned from my experience and got to help them out with future students that they do onboard. And I got to learn, learn new things about a database messaging repository that they had going on. So I would say there's, if you're looking to work possibly in the federal government, Carleton's definitely the right school for you to go to. There are various opportunities on the call board that um, I had the opportunity to apply for, have an interview for, and thankfully had a great experience working with. And so at the end of the summer, I had to say goodbye to that job, but I'm still happy because I got to switch into a great position with an office right here on campus at Carleton as a strategic or project assistant. And so this position will last me until the end of April. So it's an eight month co-op term. And um, I've had the opportunity to work with amazing people here at Carleton. Um, I feel right at home when I joined the, joined the team. And I got to work on some internal staff communications. I write reports, newsletters, web pages. I also help facilitate some workshops. So overall, I would say that if you can get into the co-op program, if you are interested, I really, really implore everyone to do so because you get to have some great experience that you have in the workplace that's different from just academic. Um, and beyond that, I think I'm really looking forward to my final year at Carleton academic wise for some more hands on upper year level courses. And yeah, I look forward to answering any of your guys' questions that you have relating to any of that. 
Um, so yeah, I'll toss it back over to Professor Brady. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ruth. So I'll just say a few words about uh, student life before um, inviting Gracie to also uh, speak to that topic. Um, so as consistent with the guiding values and principles of the program, we're interested in recruiting students who are curious, creative, engaged, and ambitious, um, and we provide a supportive and caring environment. There's a rich and vibrant student community on campus, including our Communication Student Society. Um, and so here to talk about that is uh, Gracie Lee Phillip, who is the current uh, vice president of the CSS. Hello, everybody, and thank you for having me today. I'm probably kind of leading the student life of communications right now, um, which is super awesome because it is run by students, my entire team. There's 13 individuals of us. Um, my president, Peter, he's helped me so much this year too. Um, some of the amazing things we do are um, is our mentorship program. This year we have two, the senior mentorship for fourth year uh, undergrad students, and then the general mentorship for first and second year students who will be mentored by your third and fourth year students. That's a great way to get involved and meet students and work with students to help guide you through your experience in Carleton and the communications program. Another little thing we have is our just our student events. So that's either networking nights, so LinkedIn workshops, um, networking on a virtual platform, um, things like that, and then also just social night. So that's like Mingle Mania, and then we have Pints with Profs. Um, that's to get involved with Profs, um, make those connections there, ask any questions about courses you're interested in, and then also have a chance to mingle with other students and our executive team. Um, we also have fundraising events. This year will kind of be our first one, I think, in a little while. We're going to be working with Stone Corner House. It's a women's uh, organization, um, so you can donate, and that will continue throughout the years, we're hoping. We also have events during Black History Month to um, put the attention on Black communicators. Um, that was an awesome event that will continue this February. Our team is also has so many positions that you can apply to in your first year and also your years to come in your undergrad. So that's like a communications, internal, um, the vice president and president position, a year rep position. So that's first, second, third, and fourth year standing. Um, we have also events. And then our last one is uh, community outreach. So that's ways to get involved with our executive team. Uh, you can see on the little slide, we have CU Calm Society. That's our app for our social media. Um, that's Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and hopefully we'll be getting our Facebook running again soon. We've had some difficulties there, but that's where you can find us. And then our email, carltoncuss at gmail. That's our formal former name of the uh, student society, but sadly the email will stay that way. So if you have any questions about positions or more details, um, about events or anything that we run, that's a way to get involved there. Um, and then just kind of on the side of communications as um, a program to choose in your um, minor or major, um, it's very helpful. It has helped me create another student society with women in leadership um, that's also at Carleton. Um, and just my favorite program was communications and propaganda, just learning how propaganda works. And I'm looking forward to the PR class coming next semester that I've heard from all fourth year students is pretty amazing that I've spoken with. So if you have any questions about courses or anything that I have taken, I am happy to answer that uh, today as well. Great, thank you very much, Gracie. So um, now that we talked a bit about the culture and career paths of VCOMs, um, we'll talk a little bit about the degree structure. So um, as I mentioned before, um, VCOMs is a 20 credit degree. It's a, a four-year honors degree. Um, 
So you can check out the BCOMS um, requirements under the undergrad uh, calendar. And um, I think that probably um, Millie can um, pop a, a URL for the undergrad calendar in the link. You can also find it through the links um, located in our, our booth, the comms booth. Um, so you'll see in the undergrad calendar that our course titles show up as comms. Most courses are worth a 0.5 credit. So full-time would be five credits per year. Um, and so generally that will take four years to complete your 20 credits. Um, there is a bit of added time for the co-op program. Um, so you wanna check out the co-op website for additional information on, on what that looks like. So in the first year, um, students will take comms 1001. This is um, the foundations class. Um, it'll provide um, a kind of basic orientation to our field, exploring um, various media histories from writing to print to radio and audio, images and photography, um, television, digital, digital media and social media. Um, and this really helps students to build a language to speak about media studies. Um, it also illustrates media industries or the relationship between media and economy. So some of those ownership and con control issues I mentioned earlier. Um, in the second semester, students take comms 1002, um, and this will further their knowledge through more contemporary issues. So we'll take that, that basic foundational knowledge and then pull it through to some contemporary examples that students see around them um, every day. And that will help you develop your, um, your kind of critical approaches, um, understanding of critical approaches in the field. In the first year, students learn to study popular culture, gaming, film, environmental studies, um, smart cities, and all how all these things relate to communication and media. Um, and so these are also a primer for electives courses that students can take later. So for example, while students might have their interest peaked in the first year when talking about um, something like environmental communication or science and communication, they can further focus on these areas through dedicated courses and electives through the, the uh, second, third, and fourth year classes. Um, so, um, also in the first and second years, students will be choosing electives across campus to fulfill um, their other requirements. They'll be fulfilling their breath requirements. Um, they'll learn about theory and research in their second, in their second year, um, and they'll learn about methods as well as taking electives. Um, so having, um, having an understanding of research skills is something that really appeals to future employers and it really benefits students throughout their program uh, moving up through the, the upper years as well. Um, okay, so then in the third and the fourth year, students will continue to learn about research methods and theory. So students will be taking their third year quantitative, qualitative methods course. They'll be taking a course in theory, uh, and they'll also be taking electives courses. And in the fourth year, students will continue to choose from um, electives in communication and media studies. They'll also take a workshop course um, uh, of their choice. So these are skills-based hands-on um, courses, some that involve things like digital media production, um, event management and community partnerships. Um, someone, um, Luke had asked about um, whether we put an emphasis on presentation. So there is actually a fourth year um, workshop course on professional writing and speaking that students can take as well. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, students can also, some students can also have the option of writing an honors research essay. And this is again, working um, with, a, with a faculty mentor to help develop that research um, paper. So um, our degree is structured so that students can take electives in the topic area of their choice, um, both in and outside of the program. Um, and they can also take a minor or a double major. Um, they can take a certificate or a specialization and all these things can help further focus their degree. We offer a variety of different kinds of courses to pique student interest. So uh, just to name a few, uh, political communication, big data and society, communication as food, indigenous media and global context, communication and health, algorithmic culture, media, gender and sexuality, media, race and ethnicity, 
Media Industries and Network Society, Media Law, Communication and Science, Health Communication, uh, and many more. Um, so the last thing I want to say before opening it up for Q&A is to um, get in touch anytime if you have any questions. I'm always happy to, um, to answer questions you might have. You can reach me at miranda.brady at carlton.ca. You can also send questions directly to our uh, communication mailbox. It's uh, communication at carlton.ca. Uh, happy to answer questions you might have. Um, you can also um, follow us on social media. We have a really active social media presence on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and it's at comms carlton. Um, so um, does anyone have any questions or are there other things um, uh, that I missed that uh, potential students would like to discuss? Oh, okay, is there any comparison between this program and the media production and design program? Is there any way to combine the degrees? Well, um, media production and design class um, is uh, does specialize in production, and generally the classes are uh, smaller in the uh, media production and design um, major. Um, there, there is a difference, I believe, in terms of qualifying for the degrees. So it's a small, uh, the media production and design program is a smaller program. Um, and um, I, I think um, pretty competitive to get into. And so you would have to look at the requirements for their program. Uh, but they are more designed around being a kind of uh, media practitioners um, and media production. And ours, uh, our program um, is... Um, designed to be, um, especially in the early years, building an academic foundation and providing more of a kind of a general um, scholarly degree in the very early years. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Can you minor in communication and media studies while majoring in media studies? Um, no. <laughs> so um, you can minor in communication and media studies um and while taking another major or you can major in communication and media studies and have another minor um but yeah you, you um i'm not sure if you mean um the bachelor of media production and design and in in that case yes you could i think um major in the bachelor of media production and design and take a minor in communication and media studies um did that does that answer your question Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, good. Oh, my favorite course in first year, maybe um, Rupa and Gracie can, can answer that, but um, uh, yeah, why don't I let the, the two students in the program answer that question? Yeah, so my, both 1001 and 1002 uh, with Professor Vincent were amazing. Definitely like as soon as I had those classes, I was certain to stay in the program. But if I were to say elective wise, and I guess it kind of depends on who you are as a student, but I really enjoyed um, fundamentals of music theory and also cognitive science was very, very fun. The 1001 cognitive science was really enjoyable as electives. Yeah, I would second everything that Gracie said about the first year comms courses, the 1001, 1002. Um, I also took the COG side class, which is really fun. But to give you a little other answer, like, because I'm minoring in film studies, I'm a little biased, but I would say the first year film course is really fun. So if you have any sort of inkling that you want to get into um, a minor in film studies with communications, the first year course gives you a great um, intro and it was really fun. Okay, so if you wanted to go more into a social media management type job working with brands, companies, and or individual social media personalities and influencers, does this course give you the opportunity to go into that sort of field? Um, yes, many of our alumni actually do go into um, that, that kind of field um, and do act as um, social media management. Um, 
so yes, for sure, um, that is an area you could go into. And many of our alumni have gone into that area after uh, getting their BCOMS degrees. For this question, I might jump in here if you don't mind, folks. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions about international student funding opportunities. And I want to point you over to, um, there's a services booth that you can go to to chat with some folks from the awards office. Um, our awards and financial aid office on campus at Carleton will be able to help talk a little bit more um, in detail about what funding opportunities there are available for international students. Um, and another great resource is the International Student Services Office, uh, or the ISSO, as it's sometimes abbreviated to. The ISSO has great resources and, uh, and people that you can talk to to help support you through um, study permits and help you know, understand uh, working in Canada while you're here on a study permit, that type of thing. Um, so there should be some great information available at the services booths just in the other tab. Great, thank you, Millie. And I also want to um, invite everybody to participate in our alumni um, career paths event. So uh, we are going to be hosting an event on um, November 17th uh, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. through Zoom. And you just have to register. Anybody uh, is invited to attend. Uh, and it'll be a, um, it, you'll get to hear from some of the alumni in our program and um, some of the um, uh, some of their experiences with the careers they're now pursuing. So um, please feel free to, to register for that. We'd love to have you. Uh, any other questions? I haven't seen any pop up in the Q&A for a second, but what I'll do really quickly is paste a link to the awards office just in the chat. So if anyone who's looking for information about funding scholarships, bursaries, um, if you're not able to co connect with them today at the services booth, uh, their email and contact information is available at the very bottom of the page in that like footer section. I'll do one last look for Q and A's. All right, seeing none. Uh, I just wanna thank all of our speakers and presenters today for, oh, Sweet. We have another question. <laughs> okay, great. Um, that may be an, a question. So are there specific scholarships for each program, like a communication scholarship? Um, I will let, uh, maybe Millie will know um, more about um, where we can locate that information. There are opportunities for some students um, throughout um, throughout the four years, not, not um, entrance scholarships, but the ones I know about are ones like uh, bursaries that students get nominated for um, throughout their, their time. So there are some opportunities like that um, uh, throughout their, their years here, but maybe Millie can speak more to um, entrance type scholarships. Yeah, for sure. So um, for scholarships, usually when, when students are applying to scholarships and bursaries uh, here at Carleton, they do so through like a form that we have available on Carleton Central, which is a little platform we use to organize lots of handy information for current students. Um, so through that form on Carleton Central, when you indicate your program, if the awards office and the awards administrators are able to match you with any specific um, or discipline specific scholarship opportunities, then they will. Um, but it does definitely depend on the student. It depends a little bit on um, their academic profile and, and whatever other information they've provided on that scholarship application form. Um, that does come in, in, in very handy uh, for program specific funding opportunities. Uh, but yeah, I think Dr. Brady was mentioning that there's lots of opportunities as well that students can uh, apply for while they're in the program. I know um, some, there's a program called iCurious, which is like a research uh, opportunity for undergraduate students where sometimes you're able to um, be paid for undergraduate research that you conduct with faculty members. Um, so that might be specific to, to your discipline, but it would function a little bit differently from a scholarship. Um, for department specific scholarships, I definitely 
definitely recommend chatting with the folks at Awards and Financial Aid. They know so much. They're a wealth of knowledge. Thanks, Billy. Yes, I've, I've participated in the iCurious program with a fourth year student. It was really an excellent opportunity. Um, we, we worked on a research project together and it was, it was fantastic. Um, and so that was a paid opportunity for the student through, throughout the summer. And they got, gained hands-on research experience and it also really was fun and um, benefited me as well um, in getting to work with that student. Thanks for, for bringing that up. Great. Any last questions, folks? You're welcome to pop them into the Q&A section. If not, yeah, thank you so much, Roop. Gracie, thank you so much for the student perspective. I loved hearing your stories and, uh, and, and Roop, hearing your journey, how you kind of found communications. I love listening to students who have um, these, these interesting stories of how they find their passion at university. And I think it's um, really valuable to hear that kind of perspective. And yeah, Dr. Brady, thank you so, so much for coming to talk to us today. Um, with that, uh, don't forget to check out the academic booths at, and you can talk to Dr. Hiltz. I believe she's still at the booth for communications. And then all of our services are still available under the services tab. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Millie. Thanks, uh, Gracie and Roop. And, um, and thanks to all of you who attended today. Um, please feel free to reach out anytime uh, if you have any questions. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you.